Amen. Ready again the word this morning? Yes. Have your Bibles turned to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Thank you, Lord. So I've been talking about in the last few weeks, I've been talking about in the name. Say in the name. In the name. And I don't have, I'm not have time to go back and review uh, several things we've dealt with this, but understanding that the fact is that the God is, that our God is a God of salvation. He's a God of victory. And this is a year that's going to be marked by great victories because it's a year of marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. How many could use a marvel or a wonder or a manifestations of the greatness of God in your life? Could you, could you use some manifestation of God's greatness, right? Amen. What's a manifestation? It's when his word comes to pass in your life. Amen. And his word comes to pass in your life. And as I begin today, um, I'm going to um, start here in Mark chapter 8. I want to pick this. I want us to see some things. And this is probably going to come out different than the first service, so as it always does. But um, let's look at verse, thank you, Father, verse 15. I'm going to read the Amplified. And Jesus repeatedly, expressly charged and admonishing them, saying, Look out, keep on your guard, and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod, leaven of Herod and the Herodians. And they discussed it. And they reason with one another, is it because we didn't have any bread? And being aware of it, Jesus said to them, why are you reasoning and saying it's because you have no bread? Do you not yet discern or understand? He said, do you not understand? Are your hearts in settled state of hardness? You have eyes, do, not, uh, do you not see with them? And having ears, do you not hear and perceive and understand the sense of what is being said? And do you not remember? Now, it's interesting, he says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod. Now, what is he referring to here? He's referring to be careful what you're receiving from religion and be careful what you're receiving from the world. Pay attention. See, they didn't understand. They were saying, is it because we don't have any bread? The, the issue wasn't bread. The issue was, was, was having wrong understanding. He was saying, pay attention to this, don't, because, because there's some things that can happen as, as we go through life. We can receive from different people. We can receive things from different people, and what happens is it will hinder our faith. It will hinder our walk. And so he says, be careful that you're not hearing these things. He goes, do you not have eyes? Do you not have ears? And can you not understand? And he says, and do you not remember it's interesting. He goes, and you don't remember. And he brings up this fact of the fact that he, he multiplied the bread. You know, he said, how many baskets? When we had the five loaves of bread, how many baskets do we have left over? He said, 12. When, when we multiplied the, the seven, how many baskets do we have over? When, when they multiplied the four, how many did we have left over? He said, seven. He goes, and, and so in this one verse here, in verse 21, it says, and he kept repeating. He kept repeating. He kept repeating. Do you not understand? You see, if this is going to be your year of marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestation, we can't, we have to separate ourselves from the world's understanding. We have to set ourselves apart from even religious minded thinking. Because he is saying, don't receive what they have because what they're going to do is they're going to hinder, the, they're going to hinder what you're trying to make in life. So don't receive what's coming from the Pharisees. Don't receive what's coming from the Herodians. He says, and do you not understand? Do you not understand that, that I am the only source? See, that's what he's saying. Don't, don't pay attention to what you're receiving to them. What are you receiving from me? Didn't you know that I multiplied the, fi the, the loaves and the fish? Don't you know that I multiplied when it was only four and made it, made it seven, took five and made it 12? See, we're talking about miracles here. We're talking about glorious things here. We're talking about increase. We're talking about growth. And so often we want growth, but we want to receive all these, all, everybody, everybody else's input. Receive everybody else's information instead of, what does Jesus say? What does Jesus say? What did Jesus say? He took the, he took the loaves, he took the fish, he took them, and he lifted them up to heaven, and he gave thanks for it. He gave, Father, I thank you. And what did he do? He took it to the disciples and they distributed it. Did you not understand? 
Do you not understand? I I believe that's one of the biggest issues in life is is we hear things, but we don't really understand things. We, We see things, but we don't really understand things. But yet Jesus wants us to understand. And as we talk about in the name, we have to get to a place where we understand him, understand how he works, understand there's something here that Jesus wants them to see here that I am the God that can do impossible things. I am the God that is all powerful. I'm the God that that can create something out of nothing. I can take a little and I can make it much. But the thing is, is, is you can't, he, he can't, he take, can't take your little and make it much If you're constantly looking at the world system or other religious ideas, it's only going to come down when you understand him and you understand his kingdom. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43. Let's look in verse 10. Thank you, Father. Verse 10 says, You are my witnesses, says the Lord. I'm reading the Amplified. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servants, whom I have chosen. And then he says that. You may know me, believe me, remain steadfast to me, and understand that I'm he. Now, back in Mark 8, what did he kept saying? He kept saying, do you not understand? The thing is not understanding necessarily... Are you understanding how I live? Are you understanding how I did things? Are you understanding how I did the miraculous? Are you understanding these things? See, it came down to what Jesus understood. Jesus said, you've chosen me. He says, here it says in Isaiah, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servants whom I've chosen. I've chosen you so that I've chosen you for a purpose. Uh, Why did he choose you? Why did he choose me? Why did he send Jesus? Why did he choose us? Because of these things. To know him. To believe him. To remain steadfast to him. And understand that I am he. So when we talk about using the name, it's not just declaring a name, but do you know him? It's not just saying Jesus, but do you know Jesus? It's It's not just declaring a scripture, but do you know the God of the scriptures? Do you know him? See, he says, you were chosen for this purpose that you might know me. See, you, you have this, high, what, what, what were you created for? What is your purpose in life? What, what did, why, why are you here? Let's begin right here. You want to know why you exist? To know him. You know why you exist? To believe him. Do you know why you exist? So you can remain st- connected to him. Do you know why you were created? So you might understand, he says, that I am he. Amen. I am he. I am he. And then he says this. He says, before me there was no God formed and neither shall there be after me. So what is the leaven that the the Pharisees can produce and what's the leaven that the the Herodians can produce? What what does it produce? Doubt in the, the, the fact that he is, I am he. See, everything that the enemy, the God of this world is trying to bring into your life is to doubt the fact of what God says he is. And he says, I am he. Before me, there was none, and there will be none after me. And then I love the next verse. He says, I, even I, am the Lord. And besides me, there is no Savior. I'm telling you, there there are not multiple ways to God. There is one, and his name is Jesus. There's not multiple ways to heaven. There is one. And here he says, I am he, I even I. And besides me, there is no savior. See, that's what the world wants to sow into our hearts. That's what uh, some religion wants to throw into our hearts. The world system is to sow things to our heart that there's another way besides him. There's no other way besides him. So when when Jesus was saying, do you understand? Do you have eyes? Do you have ears? Do you not remember how when I lifted that to heaven, I lifted it to my heavenly father and I was honoring his name and I was thanking his name. Why? Because I believe that he is Jehovah Jireh. I believe that he was the one that was going to provide. I believe that he is El Shaddai, the God that overrides natural law. It's impossible. 
It's impossible to take five loaves of fish and feed 5,000 and women and children. But when you have El Shaddai get on the scene, the God that overrides a natural law, when you have Jesus walking on the water, he's walking on the water. See, not anyone can just walk on the water. That's overriding natural law. That is the God of El Shaddai at work. That is the all-powerful, all-creator God. And he says, I am he, I even I, and besides me, there is no savior. So what Jesus wants us to understand, our, our, our eyes need to be open, our ears need to be open, and our heart needs to be open, that there is no other source to my victory but him. When he said, I, even I, and besides me, there's no savior, what I hear him saying is, is there's no victory apart from him. You want victory? It's going to be connected to him. You want victory? It's going to come to knowing him. You want victory? It's going to come believing him. You want victory? It's going to come remaining steadfast to him. And you want victory? It's going to, it's going to remain the fact of understanding that he is the I am. See, I mean, there's a lot of directions I could talk about, you know, in the name. And the things, you know, through the book of Acts. And we're going to get into some of those things. But these are just the foundational things that are strong in my heart for us to learn and, and grow in as a church. You have to understand that there's no other source but him. Amen. And that's really when Jesus said, don't pay attention to the leaven of the Pharisees or the leaven of the Herodians. Why? Because what it's going to do is going to hinder your faith in doing the supernatural. Amen. That's it. It's going to hinder your faith from doing the supernatural. Because they said, did he say this because we didn't have any bread? No. He said, don't you remember? I can take your one loaf that you have right now and make it much. But you have to believe that I am he. And besides me, there is no other. There's something about knowing him. There's something about knowing him. Let's go to Genesis chapter 17. I always find it interesting in doing two services. It's funny how the Lord directs the different services. So the word anyway. I am, I, even I, besides me there is no Savior. Genesis chapter 17. Knowing him. Understanding him. Hallelujah. Verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, now think about this. Remember the, in Isaiah it said, you were chosen that you would know him, believe him, remain steadfast to him, and understand that I am he. Who is he to you? Who is he when trouble takes place? Who is he when things may not work out the way you thought they work, would work, work out? Who is he? Who is he when you have symptoms in your body? Who is he when, when the, the finance or the bank account isn't where, where you think it should be? Who, who is he? You know, you know, here with Abraham, this is God showing up in Abraham's life after many years of silence. You know, Abraham tried to get the will of God to come to pass on his own, he, he tried to get the, the promise of God, he, the purpose of God fulfilled in himself. And how many times we, we, we try to do that ourselves, right? We try to take it in our own hands and try to bring, bring to pass his promises. But after so many years of, of just hearing, not hearing anything from God and, and, and seeing, his, this, uh, seeing Ishmael before him and seeing what, what's going on here. I, I, can, I can relate to that. I, I, I've seen and been in circumstances and situations. I can look at my life and, and say, how did I get here? Or how, how come I did that? Or how did they, why did they do that? And, and what's going on here? And you can get frustrated about your place in life, your situation in life. Abraham was there. Abraham was at that point of, of, of quitting. He was at that point of giving up. He was at the point of being discouraged. I guess the promises of God will never come to pass in my life. See, if, if that's how you look at it, if that's how you look at it, then really you're making yourself the God. You're making yourself the one that's going to bring it to pass. 
All he's asking is for us to know him, believe him, remain steadfast, and understand that I am he. That's all he's asking you to do. All he's asking for is your faith. All he's asking for you is your faith and your steps of obedience to do what he's told you to do. That's all he's requiring of you. He's not asking you to bring it past. He's not asking you to, to, to part the Red Sea. He's just like with, with Moses. Moses couldn't part the Red Sea in himself. But yet when he took the rod and he raised it up, Moses didn't part it. Man, God Almighty parted it. That's all, all he's asking you to do is, is to do what he's asked you to do. That's all he's requiring you. To do. And right now, this morning, all he's saying, I want you to know me, believe me, remain steadfast, and understand that I am he. So, so Abraham was at this point, and God shows up, and he says, says to him, Abraham, it says, Abraham was 90 years old and nine. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, I am almighty God. Almighty God. We could call that El Shaddai. One of the descriptions for that is the many-breasted one, the, the one that has, is more than enough to supply, who overrides natural law. He's all-powerful. He sustains you. He strengthens you. He, he satisfies you. That's, that's, the, that's one of the descriptions of El Shaddai is he satisfies you. He brings satisfaction into your life. And, and so often we can go through life feeling dissatisfied. Because of, because of other people letting us down or, or this situation or that church hurt us, this person hurt us or, or what's going on in, in politics or what's going on in the community and we're expecting everything else to satisfy us but, but the very one that is only the one that's called to satisfy us. I am he. See, when he declares I am he, he's pretty much declaring the same thing that he was declaring to, to Abraham here. I am God Almighty. Almighty, 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 Bill, Almighty, Almighty. That means that that means there's nothing else that can add to it to make it stronger. There's nothing else that you can put to it to make it bigger. It's Almighty, Almighty, All. What are, you, what are you dealing, what are you going, where are you at in your life right now? Understand, he's wanting to Abraham to understand, I am almighty God. I am almighty God. There's an, I have enough might for you. I have enough strength for you. I'm enough, I have enough wisdom for you. I have enough joy for you. I have enough love for you. I have enough mercy for you. I have everything that you have need of. I am almighty God. And I will satisfy you. And he says, I'm almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, this word <clears throat> walk before, walk. To walk means to go forward or it means the manner of life, how I live. So what is he telling to Abraham? He's saying, if you want to go there, walk before me. If you want to go there, and I, I, want to, I just want to communicate to you, if you want to go where God wants you to go, if you want to be all that God's created you to be, if you want to get out of your mess, if you want to, if you want to see restoration, if you want to see greater things in your life, then it's the same thing. Walk before me. Walk. Walk, walk means to go forward. It means to live. So before me. What is he referring to? Before me. Now, Rick, stand up for a moment. It's his birthday this week, by the way. <laughs> now, say I am, I am Abraham and Rick's almighty God. So he says, walk before me. If, if I'm before Rick, you know what? I'm in his presence. I'm in his presence. I'm not, I'm not getting the world's understanding of something. I'm not getting other people's ideas about something. But I'm in his presence. And so he wants me to walk before him and be thou perfect. Now, now we can look at this word be thou perfect in a couple, a couple ways. Walk before me. Go forward. Live in my presence and you will be without defect. Think about that. Walk before me and be, and, and be thou perfect. Be thou perfect. Meaning, when I'm in his presence, 
it will, it will perfect every area of my life when I walk in his presence. When I choose to walk in his presence, one of the definitions for perfect is blameless. When I choose to be in his presence, I'll live a life that's blameless. I'll live a life that's holy. I'll live a life that's righteous. I'll live a life that's pleasing to him. It's not about, it's not about walk, it's not about me pleasing God with my works. It's about walking in his presence to be like him. You see, when I walk in his, when I walk with him, Jesus said that we he goes, he says this in 1 John, I believe. He says, He goes, when you when you see me, you'll be like me, because we'll see him as he is, right? Something like that. Is that it? Or am I, I'm missing it just a little bit. Because when you see me, when you see me, you'll be like me. And in fact, why? Because, because we see him as he is. So when you walk in his presence, you walk in his word, you walk, you walk after the word of God, you walk according to the principle, of the Lord, then what happens is, is you will come to a place where you're not defect. So what was he telling Abraham? Abraham, you've done it on your own. You've tried to bring about the promise of God yourself. You tried to bring forth Isaac. You tried to bring forth your purpose all by yourself. But stop trying to do it by yourself. Live in my presence. And you'll fulfill everything I've called you to do. Thank you, Rick. You see, it's being in his presence. See, it's, hard, it's, impossible to, it's impossible for me to understand my wife at a greater degree if I'm not in her presence. It's impossible for me to, to for my relationship with my wife to go to another level if I'm not hearing her word. If communication isn't taking place. So if I want to understand him, then I have to be in his presence. And as I'm in his presence, he will perfect that which concerns me. Why? Because he is God Almighty. He's God Almighty. Let's go to Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Thank you, Father. Verse 1. It's he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the what? El Shaddai, all-powerful, the one that satisfies you, he who dwells in the secret place. The word dwell could be abide, it could be remain. And there's two words in this, in this scripture that are kind of similar. One is dwells and one is abides. So you could read the scripture like this. He that abides in the secret place or he that remains in the secret place now, his secret places is what? It could be his presence, right? It'd be his presence. So he that remains in my presence, he who remains in the presence of the Most High shall sit down. The word abide there means lodge, to take up residence. It's the place where you live. Remember, Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. Walk in my presence, live in my presence. So this scripture is pretty much the same thing. He that lives in the secret place, he that lives in the presence of the Most High shall lodge or sit down and remain under the shadow of the Almighty. Thank you, Father. See, when I choose to be in his presence, when I choose to go into his presence, when I choose to worship, I'm choosing to be in the presence of the Almighty God. Another way we look at almighty, if something is almighty, then that means there's no defect in its ability. It means that it's more than enough to bring something to pass. It can also mean if something is all, all powerful, thank you, Father, all things are possible. If something is almighty, that might has the ability to bring all things to pass, right? Bring all things to pass. So here, he that dwells, he that lives in the secret place of the Most High shall sit down and remain under the shadow of the one in whom nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. You see, when we talk about the name, what are you doing? You're, you're, you're talking about being in the presence of the one in whom nothing is impossible. 
And then the next verse says, says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. See, when you know that he's God Almighty, it will cause you to say something. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for terror by night nor the air that flies by day. Verse nine, because you have made the Lord, because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. Why? Because you've chosen to live there. You've chosen to know him, believe him, and understand him. And then let's go to verse 14. It says, because he set his love upon me. Now, as I said in the first service, it's not him setting his love on you. Because we know who he is at the beginning, he that dwells in the secret place. God's already in the secret place, all right? So it's not God dwelling in the secret place. It's you in the secret place, okay? But when we get to verse 14, it says, because he set his love upon me. It's talking about you and I and where we position ourselves. Because we set our love upon him. That word love there is the same reference to a man that is, is pursuing after a woman to marry her. It's, it's that same passion. It's that same desire. It's, it's that same pursuit because he set his love upon me. And so what does he say? Because you set your passion on him, because you set your pursuit on him, because you set your desire on him, because you're pursuing after God and you're choosing to be in the secret place. You're choosing to walk before him. You're choosing to not allow the rest of the world to, to, to give you input. You're choosing letting him give you input because you set your love upon me. What does he do? He goes, he says, I will, therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him up on high because he is what? Known my name. Yes. See, there's something about knowing. It's, it's not just saying Jesus or saying God or referencing somehow, but it's knowing the person. It's not just knowing the one that provides, but knowing the provider, knowing, knowing him. Yes. It's knowing the healer. Knowing the strengthener, knowing the strong tower. It's knowing them. He says, because they've known my name. Verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. All this is based on because you know him. Because you know his name. With long life, with long life, you will satisfy me and show him my salvation. With long life, long life, I'll satisfy them and show them my salvation, show them victory. With long life. But all this is based on, on where are you abiding? Because where you're abiding is producing understanding in your life. Understanding is the key to victory. Do you know his name? We're going to get into some things in, in future weeks because this is a name that you and I have been given. We've been given a name that's above every name, right? We've been given a name that's above every name, a name that's without defect. Jesus said, said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Almighty God is here right now. You know what? You don't have to feel it. It's not a feeling. But it's a knowing. It's understanding that he is here. It's understanding that he is here. It's understanding that when you're at home at night all by yourself and your heart cries out, it, knowing that he responds to your heart cry. Knowing that when you call, he says in Jeremiah 33, I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things. But all this is based on relationship. In Hebrews chapter 8, you don't need to turn there. It gives us God's desire. He says that all will know me from the least to the greatest. This is the Father's heart, to know him, understand him, believe him. Go to John chapter 10, and I'm going to close with this. John chapter 10. 
Thank you all for the word. We talk about in the name. We talk about knowing the name. It's about developing a personal relationship with him. Hallelujah. John chapter 10. Look at verse 4. It says, When he brought his own sheep outside, would you classify that as you? Are, are you one of them? Yes. Only a few of you believe that. <laughs> when he has brought his own sheep, are you, are you one of his own? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. When he brought his own sheep outside, he walks on before them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. You're hearing the heart of the Father. This is the heart of the Father. This is what Jesus wanted the disciples to understand. Follow me. Don't follow, don't follow the leaven of the Pharisees. Don't follow the leaven of Herod. Don't follow everything that's going on in the world, but follow my voice. So follow me. Walk in my presence. He said he walks on before them. Hallelujah. Because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger, but will run away from him because they do not know the voice of a stranger or recognize their call. Thank you, Father. Jesus used this parable with them, but they did not understand what he was talking about. They didn't understand what he was talking about. So Jesus again said, I assure you, I tell you, I myself am the door for the sheep. All others who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to or obey them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I am the door. Anyone who enters in through me will be saved. You could say this. I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will experience victory. He will come in and he will go out freely and will find pasture. What is pasture? It's more than enough. Everything you have need of. Just, just for a moment, just lift your hands and say, Father, thank you that you are more than enough. I want your heart open to that right now. Understand that he's more than enough. You can open your eyes. He says, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came that you have, may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd risks and lays down his life for the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd, and I know and recognize my own, and my own know and recognize me. See, this is the relationship the Father desires with the church. This is what he desires for you, and it's available to you. Man, you don't have to be good enough to earn it. All you have to do is say it. Be mine. Say, you're my door, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Verse 15, even as the Father knows me, and I also know the Father, and I'm giving my life and laying it down on behalf of the sheep. Thank you, Father. He goes, I have, I have also other sheep that are not of this fold. He's, talking, he's prophesying and declaring about Gentiles having a right to the covenant. Verse 17, for this reason the Father loves me because I lay my own life down to not take it back again. Now let's go to verse 27. I'll close with this. Actually, verse 25. And Jesus answered them, I told you and you believe not. Remember what he said? I want you to know me, believe me, remain steadfast to me, and understand that I'm he. He said, I told you and you believe not the works that I do in my Father's name they bear witness of me, but you believe not because you're not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now, let's, let's look what happens when someone follows him. He says, I give unto them eternal life. Now, get this. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My 
My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Hold your hand out like this. Say, I'm in the hand of Jesus. How much knowing that all things are possible to him that believes. Uh, you're in the very hands of Jesus. If you're his sheep and he is your good shepherd, you are in his hands. Now let's take it a step further. Now look at this. Verse 29. My father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Now get, get a picture of this. This is talking about walking with God and allowing him to perfect your life. Who are you going to get your understanding from, the world or the word, right? And, and he says, he, Jesus says, we're in his hand. And he turns around and he goes, my father is greater than all. And nothing and no one that will pluck them out of his hand. So you got, you got us in Jesus' hand. Now you got Jesus and us in God's hand. And he it says he's greater than all. Greater, greater than any sickness, greater than any disease, greater than poverty, great, you know, greater than your mistakes. Greater, greater than other people's mistakes, greater than, than your bad choices, greater than, but all he's asking is, is understand and know that I am he. Stand to your feet. Father, we thank you for the word today, and we thank you for the empowerment it brings into our lives. Lord, and I just thank you, Lord, that you are he. You are the great I am. You are the all-sufficient Father. You are El Shaddai. I thank you that you are a miracle-working God. You are a God that does good. You are a good God, and I thank you that you do great things. Lord, I just thank you for your presence and your power and your peace in this place right now. Just lift your hands and start praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah.